and welcome. Money is very, very important to live. And we count money, either the coins or the printed notes regularly. But in English language, the word money is an uncountable noun. Though we count money regularly, in English language, the word money is a noun and it is uncountable. Isn't it surprising? Yes. In this video, you are going to learn about noun and the kinds of nouns of English language. Shall we start? But before we start, I'll be really very happy if you please click on the subscription bell like buttons and do share the video so that I can come up with such kind of videos in the future. And if you're ready, let's start. Welcome back. We have discussed about the parts of speech in the previous video. I have given the link in the description. You can watch the video if you really want to know about the parts of speech. But in this video, we are going to learn about a noun. Noun, as we all know, is the name of a person, place, thing or animal or event. And we also call nouns as naming words. A noun acts or function as a subject of a sentence or an object of a sentence or a complement in a sentence. For example, Telugu is my first language. In this sentence, the word Telugu is the subject of this sentence. Not only subject, it is a noun. And in the second sentence, I like trees. The word trees is a noun and it is the object of this particular sentence. And in the next sentence, my sister is a dancer. So the word dancer is a noun and it is the complement of the subject my sister so a noun in a sentence can be a subject or an object and a complement also and now let us try to understand the kinds of nouns how many kinds of nouns are there in english language nouns are basically divided into two categories proper nouns like raju hyderabad and common nouns like boy girl town city and common nouns are divided on based on form into two categories one is countable and the other one is uncountable rice milk are uncountable whereas countable again it is divided into singular nouns and plural nouns and singular nouns are cat man and plural nouns are cats and men based on the meaning common nouns are divided into four categories number one is concrete nouns table chair door and next abstract noun beauty truth next material nouns silver gold and next collective nouns mob team and etc and apart from all these divisions there are two other kinds of nouns one compound noun the other one is possessive noun and for easy and better understanding we can say the english nouns are divided into 12 categories they are number one proper noun number two common noun number three collective noun number four abstract noun number five material noun number six concrete noun number seven uncountable noun number eight countable noun number nine singular nouns number ten plural nouns number eleven compound nouns and number 12 possessive nouns and now let us try to know about each one in a brief way the first one is proper noun proper noun is nothing but one's own name name of a person things animals and places persons like Ravi Anand things like pen chair animals like cat dog tiger places like Surya Pet, Hyderabad Nalgonda all the proper nouns should be capitalized which means they should start with a capital letter uh, either it is in the beginning of a sentence middle of a sentence or an end of a sentence so it should be capitalized he is mr raju raju is a proper noun name of a person this is a table table is a proper noun because it's a name of a thing i visited taj mahal last year taj mahal is a name of a Thing. so it is also a proper noun so proper nouns are proper names of particular persons places things or animals right and the second one is common nouns common nouns refer to a broad class of the same kind or class like persons things animals and places now persons like boy and girl things like car trees 
animals like bird cats places like village town city and these are not capitalized wherever they come no we should not capitalize we should not start common nouns with a capital letter sita is a girl the word girl is a common noun whereas sita is a proper noun sita is a name which is given to only individual girl so it is a proper noun whereas girl we can call any girl as a girl so it is a common so girl is a common to sita geeta and everybody so it is a common noun birds live on trees so birds and trees are common nouns surya is joining school today so the word school is a common noun so common nouns are commonly used for common class kind the same kind of thing and the third one is collective nouns collective nouns are nothing but it's a group of persons things animals and places for example group of persons team of players things bunch of flowers animals a flock of sheep places a library of books so collective nouns represent complete whole so for example if you say team of players team includes all 10 to 11 players so it's the complete of that particular team and other examples a herd of cattle a crew of sailors a band of musicians a class of peoples herd crew band class they are all collective nouns so the collection of one kind put together they are called collective nouns the fourth one is abstract noun abstract nouns are usually the names of quality action and state and they are the ideas concepts and the feelings they are the things that you cannot touch you can only feel the quality or you can only have some kind of feeling inside for example if you take the quality goodness kindness whiteness darkness bravery hardness honesty these are all the qualities that we can possess and the next one is action you can laughter theft movement judgment hatred these are all the actions that we perform and the next one is state childhood boyhood youth slavery sickness death poverty these are all the state of being of individuals so these are all we can feel but we cannot touch so we call them as abstract nouns wisdom is the first quality to achieve anything in life so the word wisdom is a quality so it is an abstract noun a lot of hatred is spread on social media these days hatred is an action and that is also an abstract noun poverty should be eradicated the word poverty is a state of being the condition of individual and it is also an abstract noun so we cannot touch wisdom we cannot touch hatred we cannot touch poverty we can only feel them so that's the reason they are called abstract nouns the fifth one is material nouns material nouns of the names of the metals and these metals are formed from nature like water air silver gold copper they are also formed from animals like egg meat honey milk silk leather they are formed from plants like cotton food oil wood juice coffee tea there are certain man-made material like acid alcohol brick cement butter ghee etc so these are all called material nouns anything that is in the form of material is called material noun water is the elixir of life water is a material noun milk is good for health the word milk is a material noun the sixth one is concrete nouns it is the opposite of abstract nouns we have discussed that we cannot touch the abstract nouns but here we can touch we can smell we can see or we can also taste concrete nouns they are called concrete nouns and these are all the opposite of abstract nouns and concrete nouns refer to the things that exist physically they are not the ideas they are the physical existence of a thing this is a table table is a concrete noun dog is man's best friend dog is a concrete noun and on a whole we can say except abstract nouns remaining nouns are concrete nouns the seventh one is uncountable nouns they are also called 
mass nouns so whatever nouns that we cannot count they are called uncountable nouns so uncountable nouns cannot be counted we cannot count like one two three so they are uncountable nouns and one more important thing is uncountable nouns should not be used with indefinite article a and an so a and an should not be used with uncountable nouns and the most important thing is uncountable nouns are always singular there is no plural for uncountable nouns have you got some money so money the word money is singular there is no monies we can't make plural so it is an uncountable noun and you cannot even say a money or an money no you cannot use indefinite article a or an before money so that is also very very important air conditioners use a lot of electricity so the word electricity is also uncountable noun many asians eat rice rice is also an uncountable noun so uncountable nouns cannot be counted and they do not have plural forms they only have singular forms the eighth one is countable nouns and these are all the nouns that we can count like with number one two three and the most important thing is they have the singular form and the plural form also we can say ball and balls boy and boys girl and girls so these are all the countable nouns so we can count them like one boy two boys three boys four boys like we can count so they are countable nouns ravi has a ball so ball is a countable we can say three four five six balls also pen is mightier than sword pen and sword nouns countable nouns boys and girls are equal boys girls countable nouns so countable nouns can be counted that's very easy right and the ninth and tenth one are singular and plural nouns the easy and important difference between singular noun and a plural noun is when a noun indicates only one thing one person one idea it's a singular noun but whereas when a noun indicates more than one thing or one person one idea it's a plural noun so there are certain ways of changing a singular noun into plural noun and let us see the first one is by adding the letter s at the end of a singular noun and it will become a plural noun for example book is a singular noun if you add s it becomes books it's a plural pen pens pen is a singular whereas pens after adding s yes, it becomes plural and the next one is in compound nouns we should add s to the main noun for example air conditioner so here the conditioner is a main noun so we have to say air conditioners you should add s to conditioner not air and the next one is son in law sons in law so sons is a main noun so we have to add plural to sons the third one is adding letters e s to the words that are ending with the whistling sounds like s, z, s, ch. so if the word ends with these sounds we should add e s for example bus bus is a singular if you add e s because it is ending with s so it becomes buses church is a singular it is ending with c h and if you add e s churches it's a plural box is is a singular it ends with x so we should add e s it becomes boxes it's a plural and the fourth one there are certain singular nouns that ends with f r f e and when we convert them into plurals we have to remove f r f e and we should add e s r v e s for example knife is a singular it ends with f e if you want to make it plural it becomes knives v e s we have to remove f e and we should add v e s then it becomes plural half is a singular it is ending with f and if you want to make it plural it becomes halves and we should remove f and we should add v e s it becomes plural halves life is a singular it is ending with f a we should remove f e and we should add v e s it becomes lives the fifth one is unique old english plurals and singular do not change at the end but it changes in the middle for example man is a singular but men is a plural a is changed as 
e so when you change e it becomes plural foot is a singular when you say feet it's a plural o o is changed as e e it becomes plural mouse is a singular but when you say mice it's a plural so we should be bit conscious about these old english plurals and the sixth one there are certain words we use them as a singular and plural also for example sheep it's a singular and plural also fish it's a singular and plural also dozen it's a singular and plural also but there are certain nouns which are used always in plural forms for example police scissors jeans shots so these are all the ways in which we change a singular noun into a plural noun so we understood singular noun represents only one noun but whereas plural noun represents more than one noun and the tenth one is compound nouns compound means more than two nouns it's a combination of two nouns either it can be a combination of noun plus noun for example bus stop bus is a noun stop is also noun you combine both of them it becomes a single word it is a bus stop it is a compound noun likewise football tennis and there is another combination also adjective plus noun we can have this combination also for example full moon moon is a noun and full is describing this moon so it is an adjective too so it is a compound noun combination of adjective and noun it's a compound noun likewise blackboard software is also compound nouns so there are three categories there are three forms of compound nouns the first one is open or spaced compound nouns which means there is a space between two words dining room there is a space between dining and room ice cream space between ice and cream so they are called spaced or open compound nouns the second one is hyphenated compound nouns it is nothing but having an hyphen between these two words they are called hyphenated compound nouns example mother-in-law so mother hyphen in hyphen la so that is hyphenated compound nouns the third one is closed or solid compound nouns they are one word there won't be any space or hyphen between these two words for example showcase bookmark housekeeper and etc so radha is waiting at bus stop so bus stop is a compound noun right? software industry is ever growing software ever growing they are compound nouns right so the next one is possessive nouns possession means having ownership so they demonstrate the ownership of something else so by adding an apostrophe or an s or both we have a possessive noun so we have singular possessive nouns by adding apostrophe and s we can have the possession of a singular noun for example dogs color it means color of a dog cars engine so it is an engine of a car car apostrophe s which means cars engine so this engine belongs to that particular car bus tire so tire belongs to that particular bus bus apostrophe s tire so the tire belongs to that particular bus there is another category of possessives also plural possessive nouns by adding only apostrophe at the end of this plural noun we can form a possessive noun that is plural possessive noun for example dogs already it is a plural noun we can add only apostrophe at the end of s so it becomes dogs collars so all these collars belong to that those particular dogs right it's a belongingness cars engines so these are all engines belongs to those cars buses tires and you no know, these tires belong to those buses so it is a plural possessive nouns so possessive nouns talks about ownership possession of particular noun so we have learned the kinds of nouns in this video and i hope you have understood it very clearly and we have to be very careful while looking at a word what kind of a noun it is and if you say a class of students it is a collective noun and if you say student it is a singular noun and countable noun also but if you say students it's a plural noun and if you say student apostrophe yes students it's a possessive noun and if at all if you say ssc student it is a compound noun whereas if you say boy it is a common noun and if you say ravi 
it's a proper noun so we should be a bit careful while looking at a noun if you are really looking at it in a context so i hope this video helps you to understand noun in a broader sense and if you really have any doubts you can comment on the comment box so that i can come up with some kind of answers if at all if it is required so all the very best and before you leave the video don't forget to click on the subscription bell like buttons and do share the video so that i can come up with many such kind of videos in the future thank you very much for watching the entire video